Welcome to the Minnesota First Tech Challenge kickoff. First presentation today will be presented by Spontaneous Construction, Team 14779. They will be talking about meeting remotely. Welcome, Spontaneous Construction. Take it away. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, as you said, hello, we, um, I'm Aaron. <laughs> I'm Vyaki. I'm Leah. I'm Claire. I'm Henry. And we are members of Spontaneous Construction. And uh, today we're gonna to talk to you about meeting remotely in these, har in these harder times. Um, now, quick thing I wanna mention is that these slides are gonna have a whole ton of information on them. And so we're actually gonna put this on our website later today. And that website, as you can see in the bottom, is spawnconftc.com. So if you miss something in the notes, you wanna go back and look at it again, then later tonight, we'll have this whole presentation on the website. So you can just, so you can just check it on that website. Once again, that's spawnconftc.com. All right, let's get started. So first, I want to talk about who um, my, our team is. Our team is a co-ed team of 10th and 11th graders, all from Mounds View High School. Um, we all came from FLL, and some of us were from a team called the Dots. You may have known us back when we were in FLL. And currently, we're going into our third year of FTC. Now, the co core question we're going to be answering today is, how can we work efficiently while meeting remotely? Um, to answer that question, we're going to use our experience from the summer because uh, over the summer, our team has met every single weekend um, through different software such as Zoom to um, basically do team meetings to manage everything. And so we're going to be talking about different communication software we used, as well as different um, work and time management applications that we used to um, we'll manage all the work. We're also going to talk about um, our strategies for the meetings themselves and how you can, uh, how, how you can take advantage of different um, online, free online software such as G Suite. So yeah, let's get started. Alrighty, so first we're gonna talk about the real-time communication apps. And the reason why you wanna know some of these apps is so you can discuss subjects with your teammates in real time. Now, the three different uh, softwares we're gonna, the software applications we're gonna cover today are Zoom, Google Meets, and Discord. Now, personally, our team started off using Google Meets for all of our team meetings, and then we moved on to use Zoom. Also, our team uses Discord for outside of robotics uh, communication. So here, uh, first we're gonna talk about Zoom. Now, the reason our team uses Zoom for all of our team meetings is because it's the really simple and easy um, setup and it comes with all these convenient features like screen sharing, recording, and uh, tons more. Now you don't need a Zoom account to operate Zoom or any other <laughs> functions. So what's really nice about Zoom is that it has the option of breakout rooms. And what these rooms allow you to do is essentially split up a group of people into their own little smaller Zoom meetings. And then at the end, you can all come back together to collaborate. Now, some of the drawbacks with Zoom is that if you want a meeting that is longer than 40 minutes, you will have to get Zoom Pro, which is $15 per month. Next, we're going to talk about Google Meets. Now, originally, our team used Google Meets for all of our team uh, meetings. And Google Meets is, has a lot of similarities to Zoom with its setup and some of the features like screen sharing. Now, what's really nice about Google Meets is that you only need a Gmail account to use it. And it works in conjunction with Google Suite, which we'll go in more depth later. Now, some of the drawbacks with uh, Google Meets is that there does have to be the host that lets people into the meetings. But if you don't, if you don't like the idea of having the host having to let people in, you can have the host send invites via Gmail to the participants, which will let them join the meeting fluently. Uh, righty, and last but not least, we have Discord. Now our team likes to use Discord for outside of robotics communication, like if we want to play video games together or just, you know, talk. Now, what our team really likes about Discord is that once you're in the voice once you're in a voice channel, you'll have immediate access to the entirety of the Discord server with all, you have access to all the text channels and all the different voice channels. Now you also get screen sharing with Discord and you get more detailed settings with Discord with like voice control. So you can have the volume of each participant set of like different volumes or even change how much sound your microphone picks up. You can also play music during, um, in the voice channels, you know, to set the mood. And then you can also have multiple voice chat rooms, kind of similar to Zoom. Now, with some of the drawbacks with Discord is that it is less user friendly. So if you're new to Discord, you may get confused, like, with the UI and all that stuff. And it's more complicated to set up. So 
if you want to have different voice channels, you'll have to go through the process of making a Discord server. Uh, everyone does need a Discord account to use Discord, and there are no host options for each for the voice channels. Anyone can join a voice channel at any time. So here's a table of all the three different software applications we talked about today. And personal, or our team uh, enjoys using Zoom a lot more than the other ones because of its features with the screen sharing and other convenient features. And also, it, <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, and if you want a software similar to Zoom but aren't willing to pay for longer meetings, Google Meets is a really good substitute for Zoom because it shares a lot of the same features but it's also free. And with Discord, Discord's mostly focused around like just the voice chat system and the immediate access to the text channels. For that convenience, Discord is also really good. I just want to remind everybody really quickly that all this information is going to be on our website later today. That's sponconftc.com. So try to take your time notes. No need to rush for that. Okay, moving on. So group messaging apps. First, you and your team are going to have to decide how you guys want to message each other. Again, this is just information we have found and our experiences as a team. You guys all get to decide for yourselves. So we came up with a goal, and it was, I want a quick and convenient way to contact teammates. And so each of these apps that we're going to mention will help you communicate through text instead of like an online meeting. And it'll be really helpful with lots of things. So we're going to be going over Slack, Google Hangouts, and Discord for group messaging apps. So Slack. Um, Slack's really nice in its organization. You can sort messages by channel. So for example, we have a general channel, a software channel, a hardware channel, and have discussions about each of these subjects in the certain channel instead of having everything in one big channel. It also integrates very nicely with Google and other software. So we use Slack in conjunction with Trello, which Claire will tell you about later. But pretty much whenever anything is changed or moved in Trello, we get a notification on Slack. And it helps us um, like keep track of what's going on in both software. There are also bots for reminders that we use on Slack. They're able to be used for other things. But personally, we use them to say, remind ourselves to do EN at 10, stuff like that. There are also emoticons, threads, and polls. Emoticons are just little emojis, and we use them to indicate to other teammates that we have read and understand a message. So instead of everybody typing out, yeah, I saw it, I read the message, I understand, we're just going to give like a thumbs up and then you know everybody has seen and read the message. Unfortunately, there are a few limitations. With Slack, everybody does need an account to start it and accounts are free, but there are a few limitations with Slack. A thing that we've talked about is limited on Slack if you don't have a free account, but there are still a few things. So Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is really nice in that you only need a Gmail account to start it. If you look in the bottom left corner of Gmail, there's an option to start Google Hangouts, and then it works in conjunction with all of the Google Suite stuff. So Google Drive, Google Meets, Google Keep, all of that. And it's pretty much just like another texting app. You can create group chats or just directly message someone and all your texts are in there. Unfortunately, there's not as much organization in Google Hangouts because there's no channels, just different group chats and people you're talking to. You also can't pin messages or search for specific messages from the past. So if there's something important you think you're gonna want again, you'll just have to save it because there's not a great way to find older messages. And it's um, very easy to use, but that also there's also not a whole lot of customization with it. It's just basically a texting app. And Discord. So Discord is, again, very nice in its organization. Like Slack, you can sort through channel and you can have different subjects for each channel. Discord also has the availability of roles. So you can have team members, coaches, mentors. You can give people um, roles on Discord. And it's really nice so you understand who every, who's there and stuff like that. There are also bots. Uh, you can use them for server management. There's also options like music and just more casual things. Um, again, like Slack, there are emoticons and there is lots of customization 
it within Discord if you want to use that. Everyone does need an account if you're going to use Discord, and unfortunately with the more customization, it means it's a little less user-friendly, much more complex, and especially for new users, it's a little bit hard to understand at first. So we have used Slack, Hangouts, and Discord. When we were in FLL, we were using Hangouts, and then we found Slack, moved to that, we enjoyed it more, and we tend to use Discord for like, outside of FTC stuff, so more casual things, whereas Slack is our main channel for strictly FTC stuff. Because it's you've got channels, which is really nice for the organization, and there's a large file load, and it's free, which is really nice. Um, so also the benefits with the integration and software, the bots are really nice with that too. With Hangouts, again, there's not a lot of customization, but it is free and does work with the Google Suite, which is really nice. And with Discord, we use it a little more recreationally because it's got like the bots, music, stuff like that, and it is free again. Uh, before we move on, once again, really quickly, I just wanted to mention that all this information and in this entire sli slideshow presentation will be on our website later tonight at spawnconftc.com. And I also forgot to mention earlier that um, we currently have somebody watching the Twitch chat. So if you have any questions, you can po um, post them in the Twitch chat and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Next, we will be talking about the different types of work management softwares. Our goals as a team when finding these softwares and using them were to be able to keep track of what needs to get done so that we could get it done in a timely manner. The three that we will be talking about today are Trello, Google Keep, and Asana. The first one that we will be talking about is Trello. This is the software that our team mainly uses since we found it first and we have just found it very convenient to keep using. It's useful because we can sort lists through our boards, the boards having different topics, which we set as our different subsystems so that it's more organized. It is also very user friendly. So it is easy to navigate, especially when you're first starting out. You can also assign different team members and due dates to each of the cards so that people are notified when they have something that needs to get done, which makes sure they can get it done in a more timely manner. It works well with other software, such as, as we mentioned before, Slack, and you can also have it as part of Google. There are lots of customization options with Trello, especially with the visuals, so you can make it more personalized to your team. Additionally, you can add checklists to each of the cards that you can see your progress on getting something done so to see that you are making sure that you are finishing stuff up on time. It also just uses a Google account, so you don't have to make a separate account for using Trello. The main downside to using Trello is that you can only have 10 boards with a free account, although there are upgrades available, the cheapest one starting at $9.99 per month. Next, we will be talking about Google Keep. This one like Trello, you can have multiple people assigned to one card so that you can have multiple people working on the same thing at once. You can also add checklists so that you can see your progress towards getting something done. There are some customization options on Google Keep, though not as many as you can find on Trello. It does work really well with Google Suite, however, since it is one of the parts of it. Some downsides of Google Keep, though, are that it can be difficult to organize since the main organization is being able to pin tasks and there aren't boards as there are in Trello. Additionally, you can only notify yourself and set notifications for when you want to get things done, while on Trello, you can set notifications for others as well. Finally, we will be talking about Asana. Asana, like Trello, you can have more organization between tasks into projects and sections. It is also very user-friendly and easy to navigate when you're first starting out, which makes it very simple to use and have their whole team. Like Trello, you can assign team members and due dates to tasks so that people are notified when they need to get something done. It also works with other software such as Slack and Google so that you can integrate it better into your other projects. There are customization options with Asana as well, especially with the formatting of your tasks. So you can have it formatted by calendar or you can just show what step of the project you are on with each thing. As with the others, you can have checklists or subtasks which show you how far you are towards getting a task accomplished. 
The major downsides to using Asana are that you can only assign one team member to a task. So while multiple people may be working on one thing, you can only show that one person is working on it and only that one person will be notified. Additionally, you do have to make it a, a separate account for it. And you can only have 15 members on a board for the free plan, though there are three options for paid plans. Again, there are many other options out there, such as Todoist, Evernote, or Microsoft To Do. So make sure to do your own research on what will work best for your team. These are just some guidelines we have found when using them ourselves. We've mentioned G Suite before in our presentation, but now I'm going to explain to you guys how we use G Suite ourselves for our team. We mainly use Google Drive to store our digital work, such as the engineering notebook, documents, finance spreadsheets, or slides, and anything else we need to store for the season. We use Google Photos so that we have uh, photos from all the events that all our team members can access. And we have a different album for each event. So we have an album for outreach, robot, off season, and anything else we might need to make an album for. And our team previously, or our team in the past, has had some trouble trying to schedule meetings or trying to see who's, who's busy or not, and if we can go to certain demo, demos or not. So we decided to look into Google Calendar, which is what we use now. And we use Google Calendar so we can add meetings and demos to the calendar, as well as knowing when our team members are busy or not. And the main reason, or this is how we use uh, Google Drive. We may have our main team folder, and in that we have a folder for each year. And in one of those year folders, we'll have all the subjects we need to talk about or need to store information for for the season, such as EN, outreach, sponsorship, and many more. And if we go into like the EN folder, let's say, it'll have all the documents or information we need to put in the EN. as you can see with the picture. And uh, now I'm gonna tell you how we use Zoom, Slack, Trello, and Google Calendar. So we use Zoom for our, our weekly team meetings and it's really nice, it's really simple to do. Slack we use for robotics related messaging and informing our teammates of things that happened. Trello we use in conjunction with Slack as well as screencasting it onto Zoom so that we can go through the different boards and see what has to be done for each sub team or subsystem. And then Google Calendar, once again, we use that to schedule our meetings, demos, and having a busy schedule of our teammates so we know when they're busy or when they can't work on things. Now, before we move on, I want to actually go over the two software we use the most, which would be Slack and Trello. Um, so as an example, I'm going to show you um, our Slack page. So on the left here, you can view all the individual text channels. So there's, um, for example, there's general, and there's a hardware channel, and there's also a software, somewhere, a software channel somewhere in here. So basically, each one of these channels are different um, sort of messaging rooms that are all sorted by the different, um, excuse me, all sorted by the different subjects that would, we would focus on when talking to each other. Um, also, within the actual text channel itself, um, there's this bottom bar where you can message, say messages like, hello, everyone. So you can do the messages. And also, you can, um, what we've been doing a lot recently was that when somebody does a message that's important and we want to make sure everybody saw it, we would do an add a reaction. So you can go like this, and you can add a reaction like um, we can add eyes to show that we saw the message. So then there's one thing there showing that we saw the message. We've been using this a lot, for example, things like this to show um, whether or not we're being able to come to a meeting tonight or something as well as we're also um, using Slack to share some files with each other really conveniently and of course images. Uh, now for Trello. So this is the home menu for Trello. It essentially has all these separate boards on the home menu so you can view all of them. Um, each one of these boards is essentially a section where you can stick all the different subjects and things that need to be done. So it's similar to Slack and it's text channels in the sense that you can separate them by the different subjects that will need, you need to cover. Um, for example, I'm going to show you the drivetrain one. So within the drivetrain, um, the drivetrain board, sorry, we have um, these lists here for, we have to do, in progress, blocked, and done. So these are the individual gray boxes, the long ones, which inside of those gray boxes is where you fit these cards. So these cards would be the individual tasks that need to be done. What we typically do when we are working with Trello is that we will create a card. So for example, let's say, um, build the entire robot, which will take forever, but I'm just using an example, so it's fine. <laughs> um, inside the card itself, we can add members such as um, uh, myself and Ian, because why not? And then we can also add a due date. So let's say it's due on the 16th. 
So that means that um, the day before the 16th, so the 15th, it'll actually send both me and Ian, which are these two people here, it'll send us notifications telling us that we need to start, we need to complete this task soon. And on the day itself, it'll send another notification. Now, once we actually complete the task, we can mark this off and say that it's done. Um, another thing you can do is that if this task requires a lot of separate things that need to be done, say for software, you want to program um, like the autonomous, you need to do different sections of the autonomous altogether, then you can create a checklist. So this checklist, let's say um, robot parts. So in that checklist, you can add items like attach wheels and um, attach brain or hub or whatever. And then once you actually complete those tasks, you can mark them off as complete. And then this bar here will actually fill up to show you how many you've done. Once that's actually, once that's complete, as well as when you complete the date, it'll give this little um, thing here to show that's been completed. And also for the checklist, it does the same thing. Um, typically what we'll do is we'll have the cards in the to-do list and then when we start working on it, then we'll move it into the in-progress list. So then anybody who comes here and checks the Trello board later on can actually um, see that, oh, um, Ian and Aaron are currently working on building the entire robot. And then once we finally do complete building the entire robot, we can move it into the done section to show that it's completed so anybody coming here can see that tasks are done. Now, if for some reason we can't actually complete that task, say we need to order the order new mechanism wheels or something's broken, then we would move it into the blocked um, section to show that something else that in the Trello board needs to be completed beforehand. So we could have another card saying um, order new mechanism wheels. And then once that's done, then we can move this back to in progress. And then once we complete it, we can move it back into done. So yeah, that's how we use Trello. Uh, back to the presentation now. Um, next, I want to talk to you guys about how we actually do our meetings. So over the summer, every single Saturday, we did at least one meeting where we got together and talked about everything that happened. Um, in those meetings, the basic, uh, um, basic things that happened was, of course, everybody connects to Zoom. And then we go through each of the individual Trello boards by um, screencasting the boards um, through Zoom. So one person will be editing the boards while everybody else is telling them sit if something is done or if it needs to be done. And then um, we also go through every single one of our Trello boards. So we go through software, hardware, um, and fundraising and engineering notebook so that um, each of those individual sub teams can basically tell everybody what they completed during the week. This is also a great time for the individual, individual sub teams to talk to each other and tell them um, different things that are happening and things that they need to be done to work on their own projects. Um, during these meetings, we usually have one person leading the meeting, so that person would basically keep it to everything moving by filling in awkward silences by basically saying things like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they can say things like, um, are, can we move on now, or is everybody done talking? So they can basically keep the meeting moving to um, use time efficiently. There's also usually a note taker, so that person will essentially create a bullet point list in a Google document that will then will save into its own folder in Google Drive. And then they can copy and paste that bullet point list into Slack so that um, somebody who missed the meeting can actually go onto that Slack channel and view the meeting notes and say, oh, so during that meeting, they built the entire robot or whatever happened. Um, that's all, the notes are also extremely useful for when somebody just forgets what happened during the meeting or just when you need to know anything about what happened during the meeting is that you can just go and check the notes. So yeah. Um, for the digital meetings themselves, some basic tips we have is try and keep those online meetings less than two hours because some of our longer meetings ended up being two hours and even two and a half hours. And when a meeting ends up being that long, it gets really, really boring and, and a lot of people just stop focusing. And so at that point, you're not even being productive anymore. You're just kind of sitting there saying information. Um, nowadays, most of our meetings are about, well, they're a little over an hour most of the time, and that typically is a good amount of time. So try and keep everything moving. A good way to do that is, of course, having a meeting leader. Um, you can try to turn on your face cams during meetings because it's a lot easier to focus and a lot easier to pay attention when it's actually a person talking that you can talk to. And being able to see that, see um, somebody else's face on the screen is just, it's, it feels good talking to a person. <clears throat> Um, something that's really hard to do is including everybody, but also you want to make sure that there's no awkward silences. Um, this can be difficult to do since Zoom is online and other softwares like uh, Google Meets and stuff are also online. So there's a lot of delays. Some people might have Wi-Fi issues or maybe somebody's microphone cuts out. And so that one um, leader, leader for the meeting is really good to, um, again, fill in those awkward silences when nobody's talking, but also when people are talking over each other they can basically direct the meeting and say, all right, you talk first and then you talk so that everybody in together can get a chance to talk. 
Um, also, screencast is possible. So as I mentioned earlier, you can cast Trello. That's what we usually do during our meetings so that everybody can follow along and see what's happening on the board. And make sure to take meeting notes because those can be really useful for anybody who missed the meeting. So yeah, that's basically the entire, pre the entire presentation. Um, do we have any questions that we need answering? None? All right, cool. I mean, they might still might be typing it out in the Twitch oh, yeah, chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any tips for making meetings fun? Um, okay, I have a tip for at least, um, sometimes we would meet in Discord because Discord is, good, is uh, more focused on voice stuff. So while we're in Discord, um, we can just have that be the voice channel open and then we can go work on things together. And being on Discord allows you to use bots to actually play music in the channel so everybody can listen to, it, listen to the music together and just kind of hang out. So that can be really useful for, um, I guess, making meetings more enjoyable and less, uh, they, they make them feel less like they're at workplace and more like you guys are a bunch of friends being together. Yeah. So there's no more questions coming in. We then we can probably finish up. Uh, okay. Oh, um, I just got a recommendation from uh, somebody externally saying that we could show a um, show the integrations between Slack and Trello. So I'll go do that real quick. Yeah. Okay. So um, in here, let's see if I can find it in the uh, Trello update channel. So this is a channel we designated and we named it ourselves. So um, basically the way it works is that there's an application called Trello. There's actually a ton of applications that are integrated with Slack so they can do different things. Um, for this one for Trello, basically um, what it does is that for every single time somebody changes something in a Trello board, so they move a card or they create a new card or they assign people to the card, they are able to um, basically go come here and actually view all the changes that have been made. So for example, um, I can say, oh, look, there's me um, doing something about a comment on a different card and all that stuff. So that can be really useful for integrating with Trello. Uh, Slack has many other integrations and Slack has, a, or I mean, Trello also has a ton of other integrations. We pretty much only use um, Trello and Slack together. We ha don't have very much experience with the other ones, but if you end up using a software that's different from ours, it's good to go and check and see if Trello actually has integrations with the software you're using because having integrations makes this, the experience between using each individual software can feel kind of seamless. How is Trello better than the other organization apps? Uh, does somebody else want to answer that question? Because I so, answered a couple. Yeah, no, I can. Okay. So this is just our opinion, and you guys feel free to do whatever you would like. But we have found that with Trello, um, like the, with this one, we can add multiple people which is often nice because it's not usually just one person working on a project. And um, we found a way to have like a system like Aaron talked about with our to do in progress done that has worked very well for us in the past. And um, like the checklists, the description, dates, all of that ha we've found really helpful. And I think that's all we've needed out of Trello. Um, like there's nothing we found to be lacking. So that's why we choose to use it. But again, you guys, you can do your own research. Feel free to explore. This is just our opinion. Okay, we're kind of actually low on time. So uh, yeah, let's wrap this up. Uh, yeah. uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us our email or our social media pages. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Spontaneous Construction, for an awesome presentation about meeting remotely. We really appreciate it.